Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not the evening of speech making. So there is no need we bothering you with speech. But good people of Krekebese, all indigenes and non-indigenes of Okrika that have gathered, all Anglicans and non-Anglicans that have gathered here, the church in Krekebese, join me to welcome and to invite to the microphone our main speaker and guest for this year's meeting of the warriors. He is in the person of the Apostle Michael Oropo. Somebody give the Lord the shout of praise. Hallelujah. Are you expectant tonight? Are you sure you are expectant tonight? If you are trusting God for an encounter tonight, give the Lord a big shout of praise. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. One more time, can we honor our father and our mother here tonight representing the priesthood over this commission in Okrika. Can we please celebrate his lordship? <laughs> right, Reverend Enoch Atoboyedia. Mama. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Yeah. Is that how you celebrate your father? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Thank you, your lordship, for having me. I don't take it for granted. It's a huge honor to be here to speak to God's people. Thank you, Mama. It's a great honor. I also want to honor all the venerables and the canons and the reverends that are here laboring in this diocese of the Anglican Communion. Thank you for your labor of love. The Lord continually increase you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands toward heaven one more time and talk to the Father. Ask him to speak to you tonight. If we have a keyboardist, this is the time to give me some sound. Ask the Lord to talk to your heart. The Bible said, times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. It said, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion that appeared before the Lord. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. But even in Zion, it said, they go from strength to strength. Men are not of the same strength in Zion. It depends on your level of ascension in glory. That is where power is generated. And tonight we want to go to the high places of the spirit to download the oracles of God. A generation is hungry for things that are sacred. A generation is hungry for things that are eternal. We have been given the opportunity to look upon the scrolls of heaven and to find the secrets of God. This is why we continue to press in the spirit. Tonight, if you are hungry, if you want more of God, can we ask him for access in the spirit? Can we ask him for ascensions in the spirit? Go ahead and make that your prayer. Father, cause me to appear in Zion, where the warriors of heaven are numbered. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. I was in the spirit. I 
In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Father, again tonight we have come to draw from the eternal fountains of glory. You said there's a river that flows from the throne of God. The tributaries make it glad, the cities of God. Tonight we have come as a people under your government. And Lord, we ask that you grant us refreshing encounters and empowerment. That as we depart even from here, your presence will go with us as a canopy and that your wisdom will become the strength of our spirits. That by the hand of God, we will make progress in life. The presence of the devil notwithstanding. Take all the glory, take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name. Sit down for a moment. Sit down for a moment. I will need to take some time to establish some foundations before the atmosphere becomes volatile. You know, we are, we are creatures of eternity. Although we are trapped in this earthen vessel, but our reality transcends this earthen vessel. And so we must understand the technologies of the spirit that gives us an advantage. Because our advantage is not in our brain. Our advantage is in the spirit. And only those who can ascend to the realm of God can truly touch the powers that are eternal. The things God has made available to us, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it occurred to the heart of man. But these things are accessed by the spirit. Even the blessings of the believer, the Bible said they are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so, when you look at the life of a Christian and there's a contradiction from what God has planned, from what is living, then you understand that there's a deficiency in knowledge. He doesn't know what to do, that's why he looks the way he is. But the day you understand how spiritual things work and you begin to access spiritual things, you will discover that your life and your destiny is for signs and for wonders. And one of the technologies that gives us access to the secret places where our advantages are kept is the technology of prayer. That's why the Bible said they go from strength to strength. That means our strength don't deplete. How much of strength you can draw is a function of how far you can journey. And so when a man begins to journey in the spirit, one of the things he encounters is strength. And that strength is what gives him an advantage as he walks in the realms of men. But you see, the unfortunate thing is that many don't understand the things that makes for our advantage. And the devil will keep us in ignorance so that in perpetuity we are slaves, whereas we were designed to be princes in the realm of God. He said, I have seen an abomination on the face of the earth that princes are trekking while beggars are riding on horses. So those who are destined for glory, they are not manifesting glory. That's the parable that the scriptures has made available to us. In the course of this meeting, even from tonight, one thing God will do for you is that he will unleash your wings so that you can fly. <laughs> ah, it's a day that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like eagles. There is a height in the spirit and every one of us must ascend tonight. It is good for a man to impart you but it is better for you to also come up here where realities are kept so that you become a blessing to your generation. You will not only be impacted in this meeting, you will become a blessing because yourself will ascend. 
So I will need you to play floating sound for me, but keep it low. Let me begin with foundations. Luke 18 from verse 1. Jesus was teaching. And you know Jesus is the ancient one. His walls are deeper than time. And based on his interaction as a man and with men, he began to show us some of the things that makes for our advantage. And he said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So if you are a man, there are certain things that you cannot avoid. The moment you begin to avoid it, you begin to live below God's definition of a man. Because if I go back to the book of Genesis and I reveal to you who a man is, you'll be amazed that most of us, our lives does not resemble who God calls a man. A man is not just a biological creature with two ears, two eyes, a nose, and the skeletal system. A man is deeper than that. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, when Elohim began the project of man, he made a statement that will give you an understanding of who God calls a man. And if you are not operating like that, you may be something else. But if you are a man, this is who God says a man should be. He said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. So as far as God is concerned, there are three major things that characterizes a man. The first is the image of God. And when God speaks about his image, it's not this frame. Because in the Old Testament, God gave them an instruction not to create anything that has an image and worship because he is formless. So when God is talking about image, he's not talking about head, hand, leg. Because even when you study your Bible and you begin to understand God, you will discover that when the Bible says the hand of God, he's not talking about this. He's talking about authority and dominion. When he says the face of God, he's not talking about this. He's talking about the government of God that transforms. When he talks about the head of God, as white as wool, he's not talking about hair. He's talking about his ancientness that is without beginning, without end. And he's also talking about his purity. When he's talking about the feet of God, he's talking about his dominion. So when God is talking about his image, he's not talking about this framework. When he's talking about his image, he's talking about his glory. So anybody who is a man is supposed to be able to embody the glory of God. This is why in Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to 6, when you study, as Paul was teaching, Paul said, man is the glory of God. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. And he went down to about verse 5, 6. He said, man is the glory of God. So when God said, let us make man, he was looking for a being that could reflect his glory. So when you are looking for the glory of God, you are not supposed to look into the star. You are supposed to encounter an accurate man. And when you meet that man, it is through him that you will encounter the glory of God. So the glory of God is locked in human vessels. That is why when man fell, he said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Because the man was designed to host and to express the glory of God. And the glory of God speaks about his essence. The essence of his being. Because for time immemorial, no creature has ever seen God in his fullness. Even the angels that were in heaven have never seen him. That's why day and night, the elders kept worshipping. When they stand up, they see a dimension. They worship. They stand up, they see another dimension. They worship again. So the dimensions of God were unending until he created the man and he packaged all of his glory and locked it inside the man. So the man became the embodiment of the glory of God. And the second thing God called the man is the custodian of his likeness. So when you want to understand the character of God, it is when you see his dealing with man that you understand his character. You know, before man came, the angels called him holy. Holy is not a name. The word holy means you are in your own class. You are separated from all others. There's none like you. But they could not define his character. But when men came, men say God is love. How did they know? Men say God is merciful. Men say God is kind. Because in God's dealing with man, God began to reveal his likeness, the character of God. 
So man is an embodiment of the expression of divine character. So when people want to know how God behaves, they should look upon you. Your life should be an epitome of the manifestation of the character of God. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So Christianity is not about religion. Christianity is actually a movement that reveals God. Paul, Peter was speaking in 1 Peter 2, 9. He said, you are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, God's own special people called forth to showcase, to manifest, to give expression to his glory. And so when people are looking for God, when they look around us, we should represent different dimensions. That is why Paul said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. But in our generation today, even apostles can't reveal God. Prophets cannot reveal God. People have titles, but we can't see God. So there is a deficiency in the understanding of who a man is. And finally, God said, let them have dominion. And when you understand the subject of dominion, God gave the first layer of dominion in Genesis 1.28. He said, over the birds of the air, over everything that creep upon the land, and over every creature that is in the water. That is dominion in the physical realm. When Jesus came, Jesus now took it higher. He said, I saw Satan fell from heaven like lightning. Behold, I give you power over serpents and scorpions. He's talking about witchcraft and sorcery and Satan himself. And so the dominion migrated from the natural realm to the spiritual realm. So when you see a man, a man should rule over demons. A man should rule over every spirit that is not of God. In fact, in Psalm 8, from verse 4, the psalmist was contemplating. He said, who is man that you are mindful of him? Who is man that you love him, that you visit him? You made him a little lower than the Elohim. The word angel there is not angelos. It's Elohim. You made him a little lower. That means in the structure of dominion, man was placed only under God. Every other spirit was to operate under the government of man. And that is why, speaking about the angel, he said, are they not ministering spirits? Send forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. And so, angels are here to collaborate with us to exercise dominion. And so, when we talk dominion, we are talking rulership over the visible realm. That is why you are not designed to beg. You are designed to rule over the elements. When Jesus was on earth, the boat left him. He was not stranded. The Bible said at the third watch, Jesus came walking on water. That is a man walking on water. He had dominion over the waters. They said they needed food to eat. They said there's no food here. Even one year's wages cannot provide food. Only a boy has five loaves and two fish. Bring it here. He collected it. I thank you, oh father. Take, give them. Five loaves multiplied and fed 5,000 men. That is a man exercising authority over the visible realm. This is why we bless. So if you are into business, the business cannot fail. Because as a man, you have authority to exercise dominion. If your business is failing, all you need to do, if you know who a man is, you should walk to that business and say, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, begin to walk. The business will hear. And then when a demon is involved, it's easier. You show up, you say, in the name of Jesus, be bound. They have no choice but to hear. We don't negotiate with demons. We give them commandments. It's the heritage of men. But you see, many of us are not operating like that. Why? Because men ought always to pray and not to faint. So when a man does not pray, he is not prayerless. The opposite of not praying is not prayerlessness, is fainting. So when a man stops praying, he stops walking in glory. When a man stops praying, he stops walking in the likeness of God. When a man stops praying, he stops exercising dominion. This is why most of us are sick. The demons that we shall command, they are oppressing our bodies. This is why our businesses are failing. The elements that we should rule over, they are rebelling against us. Because until the sons of God appear, even creation will be in bondage. I'm trying to show you the force of prayer. The government of prayer. Prayer brings you into the full stature of who a man is. And so for thousands of years, 
God could not identify any man until Jesus showed up. And at the baptism, he looked upon him and said, this is my beloved son. For the first time, I have seen a man who embodied my glory. I have seen a man who operates in my likeness and I have seen a man who exercises dominion. This is my beloved son. The man I tried to create in the Garden of Eden for the first time, he has manifested. And after Jesus left, every one of us became of his kind. But Jesus gave us a code. He said, men ought. There are two times in scripture that that word was used that what men ought to do. The second time he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you eat only bread, yam and beans, you will end up like the animals. That's why he said, a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. The reason most of us are perishing is because we are only feeding on what animals feed on. We are not yet eating the word and we are not yet ascending in the place of prayer. So in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, Jesus said, if you are a man that can carry the image of God, that can manifest the likeness of God and that can exercise dominion, he didn't say you should pray. It's not an advice. He said you ought to pray. Because this is what will bring out your manhood. This is what will bring out the dimensions of authority that was conferred to you as a man. But I can tell you, till today, many have not started operating like that because there is no prayer. The moment Jesus left, the next generation of men that came after him, they had one way of life. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. He said, we will not, it's not proper for us to give ourselves to tables. We are not going to clamor over cars. We are not going to clamor over food. We are not going to clamor over connections with people. We are not going to clamor over what the ordinary men pursue after. They say we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Because these are the two things that make men. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And men ought always to pray and not to faint. If there is one thing this conference wants to do for you, it's for you to begin to manifest the glory of God. If there is one thing this conference wants to do for you, it's for you to begin to walk in the likeness of God. If there is one thing this conference wants to do for you, it's for you to begin to exercise dominion. Listen, on Sunday, church is packed out. But you go to the market on Monday, you find thieves. You find harlots. You find criminals. What is going on? We are doing religion. We have not begun to do business in deep waters. This is not a conference to raise religious men. This is a conference to raise men that know God and operate in the fullness of God on the face of the earth. But one of the keys to raise such men is that men ought always to pray. He didn't say your pastor should pray for you. He didn't say your prophet should pray for you. He didn't say your apostle should pray for you. He said, if you are a man, you ought, you ought, you ought always to pray. We pray for our parishioners, all the reverends here. If there's one thing they do is to pray for those who fellowship under them. But I can tell you, your destiny requires much more than a man praying for you. You too must develop the character of prayer. That is when the glory of God on your life will manifest. Otherwise, you will walk among 8 billion people as if you never existed. But that will not be your portion. Men ought. Always. Not once in a while. Not when there is a retreat. Not when they have to preach. Not when there is a challenge. Some of us only pray when there is crisis. That's why crises keep coming. There's a realm you will pray to. Every crisis that comes, you are above it. Some pray only when there's an organized retreat. That is for weak people. Those who truly want to exercise dominion, Jesus said they pray always. And it is because of that prayer that they don't faint. Tonight, I want to show you seven dimensions of the forces of prayer. I call it the seven government of prayer. And trust me, anybody who engages prayer, 
these seven things will become your reality. And these are the things that will help you to manifest glory, likeness, and dominion. Oh, how beautiful it is when a man begins to walk in dominion. I remember the story of my family. In six years, about seven persons died. It looked as if death had us on timetable. Every one year, the moment it is March, somebody must die. As though we were chickens waiting to be slaughtered. I was an apostle. But you see, this thing is more than title. There are things that respond to power, not title. Men can honor you because of title, but spirits have no regard for title. It's the power you command that they respect. And it took over six people dying before I woke up to my priesthood. And when I woke up to exercising dominion, even death knew he can't come there. The spirit that took lives knew he can't come there. Everything went back because Christianity is not a sham. What we are talking about here are realities that can be replicated. And many that have taught this truth have exercised dominion in their families, in their lives, and even in their territory. Prayer has power. Every Christian must master the art of praying. What is the first force of prayer? It is spiritual energy. Many people are weak. They have no energy. Because no matter the food you eat, it can only give you physical energy. Your physical food ends up as ATP. But the energy you need for your destiny is spiritual energy. And only by prayer and the word can you generate that energy. You know what the Bible said? In Proverbs chapter oh my god i wish you catch what i'm about to share tonight proverbs 24 verse 10 he say if you faint in the day of trouble it's not because your god does not exist sir your god is present your god exists but there's a technology your god has invented for you to succeed he said if you faint in the day of trouble it means your strength is little did you not read hosea chapter 6 verse 4 he said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge god does not deny them god calls them his people but there are prerequisites for certain levels of dominion and so the bible is telling us the energy you need for the battle of life you need to generate it otherwise when the crisis of life come it will swallow you don't say god where are you he's sitting on his throne in heaven but he has taught you what to do in order to overcome when you were a child any little thing that happened god intervenes but there's a level of maturity you get to god expects you to rise up and fight your battles those of you who are fathers here you know that when your child was three years old four years old five years old you were always looking out for him if your son is 30 and you are still looking out for him have you eaten which clothes are you wearing it means you don't know what parenting is when your child begins to grow up a day comes you pursue him out of the house and say go and get a house go and get a job if he comes to you at 35 and say i have not eaten you say what do you mean go and get your food because you expect him to have built capacity but you see there are many people who have been christians for 15 years they are still children there are many people who have been christians for 20 years they are still children because they have not paid the price to build stamina and the way to build stamina is by prayer so when crises and calamities of life cut them off god is telling them go and build strength all of the crises you are going through is an alarm system that you are weak and how do you build strength he say you dearly beloved jude 120 building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost if you want to build strength put your knees on the altar and as you build strength you will discover that what they call crisis will be converted to testimonies every time a man gives testimonies bear it in mind that that was a crisis the opposite of crisis is testimonies because if you don't have strength you will end up in crisis but if you have strength your crisis will become the altar of your manifestation and so every time we testify we are testifying of the excellency of the energy that prayer produces building up yourself it didn't say somebody will build for you although his lordship loves you he can't build it for you you build up your own strength upon your most holy faith 
by praying in the Holy Ghost. If you don't pray, you will not build strength. This is why we must all imbibe the culture of prayer. In 1 Timothy 4 8, it says, Bodily exercise profited little. I wish you, I had time to show you the benefits of bodily exercise. But compared to what spiritual exercise produces, it says bodily exercise is little. Some of you here are doctors. When you exercise yourself, certain things begin to happen in your body. Number one is that your blood streams are flushed of fatty acids. So the flow of blood increases. And as the volume of blood increases, even your mental capacity will be enhanced. You will discover because the, blood, the brain feeds on oxygen. So a man who exercises thinks faster and more creative than a man who doesn't exercise. And because the brain is functioning well, you can withstand more stress and pressure. What breaks other people down cannot break you because the brain is functioning in optimum capacity. That is one. Number two, when you are exercising, your arteries and your veins and the heart becomes more elastic. Meaning you have the potential of living longer. Your lungs become more elastic. You have the potential of living longer. That is not all. Tumors in your body begins to melt as you begin to exercise. So the tendency of ending up with tumors like cancer is minimized because of exercise. That is not all. Your muscles are developed. And you discover that things like arthritis, back pain, knee pain, you will not have it even at old age because you exercise. All of that benefit, the Bible calls it little. To give you an idea, the excellency of spiritual energy that we generate when we exercise ourselves. How can you say diminishing the risk of cancer is little? How can you say higher brain capacity is little? How can you say shutting down the threat of having high blood pressure is little? How can you say killing off every possibility of arthritis is little? It's little compared to what you will gain when you exercise spiritually. So if bodily exercise has all of these benefits and the Bible calls it little, imagine the benefits you derive when you start praying. Can I tell you, when you start praying, the oil on your life begins to flow. When you start praying, your spiritual sensitivity is activated. When you start praying, favor can rest upon you. When you start praying, doors can open. When you start praying, the lines can fall onto you in pleasant places. All of these things, one of it is more important than all the physical exercise. And so when you find Christians who tell you things are not working, ask them, do you pray? Because those of us who pray, when things are not working, we make them work. That's what prayer does. In Philippians 4, 6 and 7, it says, be anxious for nothing. So, there is a way of killing high blood pressure through exercise, but there's a superior way. When I pray, I don't know anxiety. It said, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It said, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses knowledge, the dimension of peace that cannot be explained. It said, prayer brings it to you. All of that is part of spiritual energy. When you begin to pray, you will discover that the temptation that throw men down, you will not notice it. There are some people who cannot go for one month and be sexually pure they tell you all these girls everywhere I don't know what to do wow you know what Jesus said the Bible said because thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity what kind of strength is that Daniel lived in Babylon Babylon was a nation of corruption he was pure how did he do it by prayer so there is an energy that comes that builds purity there's an energy that comes that creates open doors. There's an energy that comes that brings favor. All of that is what prayer does. And there is an energy that comes that makes you become a sign and a wonder. Sometimes when you pray and the power in you is exercised, it's like electricity. You can feel it. You come somewhere, somebody tells you, I have pie. You say, pie, die. 
Something leaves your world like radiation and diminishes the power. Somebody tells you, I have cancer. You say, cancer, die. You don't need to go for physiotherapy. You don't need to go for radiotherapy. You don't need to go for chemotherapy. Your walls alone becomes both radiotherapy and chemotherapy because you have generated energy on the altar of prayer. I've seen many who should die come back to life because prayer was generated. In Ephesians 3.20, it says God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all you ask or think. How? He said by the power that is at work on your inside. What is the power at work in you? Some people don't pray, so there's no power at work. They, when, when their spiritual antenna should activate, it's still dormant. When anger against sin should rise up, they are weak and everything can match on them. So you see somebody that should have a glorious destiny becomes a slave in his generation. Becomes a weakling in his generation. When Jesus went to the mountain, fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, in Luke chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, Matthew 4, verse 15, the Bible said, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, he said the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He was there for 30 years, but he had not generated that power. After 40 days of prayer and fasting, even the territory knew that light has come. And the moment he entered the synagogue, the Bible said he opened the book of Isaiah and read. Immediately, demons began to cry. Why have you come before your time? He has been entering that same tabernacle for 30 years. Why were those demons not crying? Now, energy has been generated. Even the demons know they can't stay in that environment. Remember, this is the son of God we are talking about. But because he too became a man, he needed prayer to charge himself up. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Pray. See, there is a dimension of you that demons can't dare. There's a dimension of you that sickness cannot dare. There's a dimension of you that witches cannot dare. When you are charged, you become like naked wire. They touch you, they die. There used to be a time in my life where they advised me, don't go to the village. And if you think it's a joke, you go, you come back with things. But the point came, we became charged. We became charged. And so we don't only go to the village. When we enter the village, we sanctify people's houses and territories. Because we came, witches run. Witches die. What is the difference? Somebody tell yourself, voltage. You need voltage. The voltage is low. So there are appliances you can't carry. This microphone operates at a voltage. This bulb operates at a voltage. These amplifiers operate at a voltage. When the voltage becomes low, the amplifier will be there, but it won't work. The microphone will be there. It will not work. As you are seated now, there's glory on your life. There's dominion on your life. There's anointing on your life. There's favor on your life. There's wisdom on your life. But the voltage is low. That is why you can't keep quiet. In the night you wake up. Kakatara bastavak. Dede dagabara dagabashta. Rakiba tota. Jakasta. Bantaro bakede. You wake up in the morning. You are in the bathroom. As you are showering. Kibo sabakida. Bakurua tadadina. Banzata. Veriada. Barusto. Akstebere katuna tabak. Barato. And then as you are going out. You want to drive. Then you pick a signal. Wait for five minutes. Even you will not know why, but voltage is working. So the cement has woken up. Wait. And after five minutes, you drive your car. The same junction you would have passed. They told you an accident happened five minutes ago. How did you know? Voltage. Makabura kata. Zegi parado. You want to enter a business. You have signed the check already. You are about giving it to here. Wait. You don't know how you know. And then you stop. You say, give me till tomorrow. That same night, you hear that that business has crashed. How did you know? Voltage. Discernment was always there, but it took prayer to wake it up. It took prayer to wake it up. Somebody is about to die. You say, no, you cannot die. And the person leaves. How did it happen? Voltage. The anointing was there, but it took prayer for the anointing to begin to move. I prophesy over someone tonight. The dimension that awakens your propensity. It rests upon you now. Ah. Ah. 
Vakavina Vakataza Zezeni Mangrido Pakatalish Boruata Figaka Stiva Kabina Kadosh Zegizo Zagak Teriabon Deve Karusta Pika Pakas Zasapatiza Zeneparosti Manta Kiwaka Hear this Hear this Do you know that Jesus was just 33 and a half years when he left this world? At 33 years, see the level of impact that he left on the earth. 33 years. So I'm already far older than Jesus. But at 33 and a half years, he had shaking, shaking the world, and generations after him could not recover. What did he know? Meanwhile, he only walked for three and a half years because he started at 30. What was it that he knew that in three and a half years he shook the world? And the same Jesus told us in John 14 12, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works. He knew something. The Bible said, In the beginning was the world, the world was with God, the world was God. All things were made by him. John 1 from verse 1 to 4. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. In just four scriptures, they called him four things. He was the world. He was God. He was the life. He was the creator. And he was the light of men. But for 30 years, God did nothing. For 30 years, creator did nothing. For 30 years, life did nothing. For 30 years, light did nothing. But the moment he returned from prayer, the Bible said he returned in the power of the Spirit and his fame went abroad. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali. What is it about prayer that he knew and engaged that we don't know? In Mark 1 35, he said, Daily, a great while in the morning, Jesus went to a solitary place. There he prayed. What did he know about prayer that we don't know? We keep complaining and complaining. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is little. The first force of prayer is energy generation. If your energy level goes up, you will be shocked what will come out of your life. There are wisdoms you have that you don't know. There are anointings you carry that you don't know. There are favors you carry that you don't know. Pray. And see what will happen to you. You'll be amazed. Some of us were in oblivion. In the valley of Benue. Nobody cared if you survived. But when prayer entered for a while. Even your voice changed. And a generation hears your voice. And they desire it. Meanwhile you have talked for more than 20 years. Nobody cared if you existed. Only God knows what we carry that has not manifested but I made a vow to myself may God help me not to go to heaven and discover there were things he gave me for earth that I didn't utilize everything that I carry like Paul I must empty it before I live here I have run, I have fought a good fight I have kept the faith there remained for me a crown of life every one of us must be emptied the wisdom you carry the anointing you carry the favor you carry everything God has given to you you must through prayer empty it. But it will take energy to operate in that dimension. The Bible said even widows were not helpless. He said they received their dead back to life. People that should be beggars. There was something engaging the spirit did for them. That they become agents that brought dead people back to life. How could they beg? We are not ordinary. It's our prayerlessness that has made us ordinary. We are not ordinary. 
It's our prayerlessness that has made us appear ordinary. The second thing prayer does is that prayer gives you access to the preceding word of God. It is the spoken word that makes you invincible. The logos can teach you principles. But for you to walk in perpetual victory, you must have access to the spoken word. He said, my sheep heareth my voice and they obey me. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema, not logos, by every rema, for every season of your life, there is a word. The Bible said concerning Joseph, he was in prison. Psalm 105 verse 17. He was kept in fetters. They locked, chained him, threw him to prison. He was there for 14 years. Nothing happened. He tried all of the connection. He interpreted the dream for the butler. He said, when you go to the king, please remember me. See, even men can't help you until your word comes. Your helpers will forget you until your word comes. The butler forgot him. And the reason was not because the butler did not want to help him. The reason was because his word had not come. The Bible said until the time that his word came. It said the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent for to lose him. Even the ruler of the people. He made him lord of his house and ruler of his substance. To bind his princes at his pleasure. And to teach his senators wisdom. How can a prisoner become an instructor of senators and princes? His word had come. You know the problem with many people? Their word come, they don't hear it. Because you don't hear your word with this ear. You hear your word with your heart. And what will open your heart to be able to hear your words in season is when you begin to engage the altar of prayer. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, it says, knowing this first, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It says, holy men of God speak as they were carried by the spirit. So they were in the spirit. That was why they heard. A man who is not in the spirit cannot hear the spoken word and the problem is that God does not speak to you to inform you he does not speak to you primarily to educate you God speaks to you to empower you God speaks to you to change your level God speaks to you to open doors for you God speaks to you to bring you into new seasons so when you don't hear God your seasons are going when you don't hear God your opportunities are going when you don't hear God your empowerments are going but you must be in the spirit to hear God because God is spirit if you are not in the spirit you may not be able to receive from him John said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 he said I John even your brother in tribulation he said I was in the eye called Patmos on the day of the Lord and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a sound as of a trumpet you can't hear your word until you are in the spirit and the easiest way to enter the spirit is by engaging the altar of prayer. Because being in the spirit is to have the Holy Ghost and to become spiritually minded. But many people cannot because they are not praying. Yes, they have the Holy Spirit, but they are not spiritually minded. So although they are supposed to be in the spirit, they are carnal, they are in the flesh. So they cannot even know the things that are freely given to them by God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 to 14, it says, we have not received the spirit that is of this world. We have received the spirit that is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. He said, we things we speak, not with words that human wisdom teaches, but with words that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. He said, but the carnal man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's the problem of a believer. He cannot discern because he is a prayerless person. So every time he is reasoning things from his brain, he thinks destiny is about 1 plus 1 equals 2. Destiny is deeper than that. When you enter the equation of your destiny, 1 plus 1 can be 1 million. 1 plus 1 can be 1 billion. That's why nobody can look at you and say, in five years, you bought one machine. In another five years, you should buy your first car. The destiny doesn't work like that. If you know what to engage, you may not have a house in 30 years, but in two years, you can build a mansion. 
Because in the spirit, one plus one is not two. One plus one is anything that grace calls it. And it will take prayer for you to hear it. It will take prayer. You may be in obscurity, doing one business for 24 years, no gain. In one day, you can make a gain that you have not made in 24 years because your season can be realigned. He said, the line shall fall unto you in pleasant places because you have a goodly heritage. It is prayer that makes those things happen. And so the second force of prayer is that prayer, prayer, this powerful instrument called prayer can give you access to the proceeding world. And the proceeding world will change your story. I have seen people who came back to life just by one word, live and not die. I have seen people who came out of obscurity just by one word, arise. Arise can change people's story. Look at the man who was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. He missed several seasons. He said, at a certain time, the angel of the Lord troubled the water. Whoever gets in first is cleansed, but I don't have any helper. So I have missed many seasons. Jesus looked at him and said, Arise. Take your mat and go. It didn't matter how many seasons he missed. One word changed his story. Listen, if you will hear the proceeding word, your life will become a wonder. But for you to prepare yourself to hear the proceeding word, you must be gathered by prayer. Prayer, it will change your story. I have heard this word many times, and I can tell you different seasons of my life that represented different things God said. There was a time God spoke to me and he just said the statement that the nations will hear me. In three weeks, I had invitations from more than 17 nations. I asked myself, I have been preaching for close to 10 years. How come nobody cared? How come nobody heard the word had not come? Now he said, the nations will hear you. That was all. Immediately, doors began to open. You can't even collate your invitations for one year. And you are wondering, what are you preaching? It's not about the intelligence of the message. There are many teachers who can dwarf what you teach by one message. But God has spoken. And you have heard. If you hear, your life will change. So people who have understanding, God speaks once, they hear twice. He said, Lord, once have thou spoken, twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. Because if you don't hear, you will not move forward. So when we are praying, it's not religion. The goal is not, I pray for five hours. No, the goal is that anything God says, I can hear him. I can pick his signal. Because the idea is not come to brag and say, I'm a prayer warrior. The idea is not to brag and say, I can pray for 10 hours. What are you hearing? The goal of the prayer is to hear something. Your future depends on it. Your season depends on it. That's why you must not dis dis distract yourself. Didn't you read about the Pharisees? The Bible said they took pride to pray for long. And they stood by street corners that men will praise them. It's not about receiving a title from a generation that you are a prayer champion. You can be a prayer champion and be useless. Only those who pray and hear make a difference. And so the second force of prayer is that prayer gives you access to the proceeding world. And when those words come to you, you carry them. One of the times I was in the place of prayer and God told me, because I live, you will live also. Wow! That was the day the fear of death left me. And there was a day I was preaching in the nation of Pakistan. The time I went to Pakistan was the time they impeached the prime minister. So there was a lot of tension in the nation. In fact, they were fighting against massive gatherings. And what we were doing were crusades. I would stand on the altar. Security men would stand with God. But I was preaching Jesus with boldness. Not because of the security, but because a word came to me. Because I live, you will see tomorrow. So I know that I will not end in Pakistan. Listen, when you see men functioning through life with audacity, they heard something. They heard something. And this conference will not be over until you hear something. For some of you, God may tell you, your captivity is over. And if God says that, it doesn't matter how many sorcerers are in your father's house. Everybody can be a witch doctor. That one word is enough to sustain you. For some of you, God will tell you, the yoke of poverty is broken. Even if you are selling pure water, you will be a millionaire. Because that word will produce wealth. For some of you, God will tell you, that you will finish well 
it doesn't matter the level of corruption in Port Harcourt. You will walk in holiness because your word has come. He said, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. I prophesy over someone. This is the morning of your life. You will not die. I'm showing you the excellency of prayer. I have no business doing anything to, that fails. Because God has spoken. God has spoken. And today God is speaking to someone. Even as I'm talking now, some of you, the things God told you before that you forgot, the Holy Ghost is bringing it to your remembrance. As I'm talking now, and as you walk out of this meeting, they will start manifesting. Is transformation and transfiguration when a man begins to pray something happens on his inside that's what releases the glory the glory is locked on your inside the Bible says we have this glory in 18 vessel there is glory on your inside but there's a technology for unlocking the glory in Matthew 17 verse 2 and 3 the Bible said concerning Jesus after eight days he took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to a mountain. And he said, there he prayed. And the Bible said, as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. His raiment, even the cloth that Jesus wore, began to glow. See, what men are looking for is not your hair cut. What men are looking for is not your skin color. What men are looking for is not the way the suit lap on your body. Nobody will submit to your destiny because you wore a good suit. Nobody will submit to your destiny because you have a good haircut. Nobody will submit to your destiny because you have a good skin color. Some of us waste all our life working on the externalities that does not add much value. There is a glory locked on your inside. If that glory is released, even strangers will stand to build your walls. Your ki kings will come to you. you. Did you not read what the Bible said? It said the Gentiles will come, not to you, to your light. That's your glory. It said kings will come, not to you, to the brightness of your rising. And so what men are looking for in you is the glory you carry. But the technology for awakening that glory is the technology of prayer. We didn't know why everybody wanted to touch Jesus. It was in this scripture that we discovered it. That as he prayed, glory began to rise from his inside. The Bible said the fountain of glory rose until he was transfigured before him. So every time you, every time you pray, two things amongst other things happen. Number one is transformation. That's why if you are angry with somebody and you start praying, you can't ascend. God will insist that you make peace. That is why if you are jealous of somebody, if you start praying, you can't travel. God will insist that you make peace with that person. If you are bitter towards somebody, you can't pray. This is why wicked men cannot pray. Because prayer will attack the flesh. Prayer will insist on transformation. And so when a man genuinely begins to pray, what happens to him is that transformation takes place. The tendencies of the flesh are mortified. And then God will now help you further by asking you to pray for those who hate you. That's when you will now discover that it will become impossible for you to hate anybody. That's when you will discover 
it will be impossible for you to bear grudges with people so your soul will be washed your soul will be transformed until your soul will become like the soul of Jesus Christ that is the soul that conducts power that is the soul that conducts glory so as transformation is taking place something now begins to happen the glory that is locked on your inside now begins to come up and so when men see you they will no longer see you based on your looks they will now see you based on the flavor and the aroma of glory that you carry it is in the context of glory that age doesn't matter it is in the context of glory that gender does not matter it is in the context of glory that your country your nation your nationality does not matter when glory comes upon your life you shift men to the spirit realm and so you may be 15 years old your generation will look for you i have studied and i have traveled a bit i've come to discover that in modesty they respect age but in the reality of life they respect value this is why today you walk around you see men in their 60s and megad you can honor them as elders but when it has to do with the value of life you are looking for what they can bring to the table and so what prayer does for you is that it allows the glory and the value of god on your inside to begin to manifest if you carry glory it doesn't matter if you're a woman they will tell you it's a man's word it's a joke when you carry glory gender is removed that's why till tomorrow we celebrate the likes of Catherine Kuman. Till tomorrow we celebrate the likes of Maria Woodward Etta. Till tomorrow we celebrate the likes of Ami Semper McPherson. Even in the Bible, the, the Bible spoke of a woman called Deborah. And it said a judge rose in Israel. And the Bible called her a mother in Israel. When men fainted, Deborah rose. And it said, and Deborah rose. And in the days of Deborah, they needed warriors. You will think it's a function of muscles. No, it's a function of glory. The issue was so bad that the Bible said people were not using the highway because of banditry, because of corruption, because of evil. People were literally afraid. The armies of Israel ran away. But a woman rose up as a judge to let you know that this thing is not about gender. This thing is about glory. This thing is not about age. This thing is about glory. This thing is not about skin color. It's about glory. They may call you a black man. That is when glory has not manifested. When glory manifests, an American can be your driver. It has nothing to do with which nation you came from. It had everything to do with the glory that you carry. When glory rises up on your inside, you can go to America and they will gather to celebrate you. You can go to the UK, they will gather to celebrate you, regardless of which country you come from, regardless of your age and regardless of your gender. So when God gave us prayer, he gave us an equalizer so that no man will have an excuse. If you say it's because I'm black, he will show you a thousand black people that shook their world. If you say it's because I'm a woman, he will show you a thousand women that shook their world. If you say it's because I am young, he will show you a thousand young men that shook their world. If you say it's because I'm old, he will show you a thousand old men that shook their world. It's about glory. And you know the good news? The glory is in you now. But it, took, it takes prayer to excavate it. It takes prayer to lose it. It takes prayer to unleash it. And I pray for someone listening to me tonight. That glory in you will manifest this night. I wish I had time to share testimonies of what the glory does. I wish I had time. Some of you, if I share some testimonies, you will literally stand up and start running. You won't, your head won't be able to contain it. What God can do with a man's life, a nobody, like David who was a shepherd boy and God took him from keeping sheep to become a king. Those are the powers that God can demonstrate in the economy of glory. But it takes prayer to unleash them. Your glory will not be shrouded from today. Number four, maybe I will stop here. Legislation and litigation. We change things by prayer. See, forget the funny cliche that if it will happen, it will happen. If it will not happen, it will not happen nothing on earth happens everything you see happening is made to happen this light didn't happen 
it was made to happen this sound didn't happen it was made to happen you didn't happen you were made to happen everything you see on earth somebody was responsible to making it happen if you sit down and say if god will heal me he will heal me you will die if you sit down and say if god will bless me he will bless me you will end up poor ask those who are not making impact that is their testimony that's why they are where they are but ask those who are making impact they will tell you what they did by the grace of god to bring them to where they are nothing happens on earth everything happening here was made to happen even science has proven it the principle of cause and effect every effect you see was caused nothing happens things are made to happen and one of the ways to make things happen is by prayer and for things to happen by prayer there is legislation and there's litigation litigation is the act of stopping what you don't want from happening is to petition against something that should not be happening that is happening so that it stops whereas legislation is to write things into happening so on one side you are stopping what should not happen from happening and on another side you are making what should happen that is not happening to happen that's what prayer is about and so when a man begins to pray what is happening is that he is beginning to exercise the authority to create change because every change on earth is a function of prayer jesus was speaking in mark 11 22 to 24 he said have the god kind of faith he said what is the god kind of faith he said if there's a mountain before you don't stand and say if god wants this mountain will go god wants but the mountain will not go until you do something he said when there's a mountain before you he said you say to the mountain be thou removed be thou cast away and if you do not doubt in your heart he said you will have whatsoever you say and then he went in verse 24 and began to teach us the principle he said whatsoever you desire don't sit idle and say when god wants it will happen he said whatsoever you desire he said when you pray that means what you desire will not happen until when you pray he said believe that you receive them and you shall have them many people have been in one spot in life dying of sickness dying of poverty dying of pain dying of wickedness because they were wrongly trained somebody told them it will happen it will happen and the person that told them has not made progress and they were not wise to look at the person and say no this is not the future i'm looking for better hear from those who are commanding the results that you desire their principles are different from those who have no results when you pray that is the master teaching us how things change he said believe in your heart and you will have what you say so anybody who wants a change must pray if you want to be healed you must pray if you want prosperity you must pray if you want progress you must pray because if you don't pray it will not happen now when you start creating change by prayer there are levels the first level of change is personal so everything that pertains to your life, you can change it by prayer. It is personal. I'm sick in my body. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness. And I will insist until the sickness go. My business is not working. I will pray until the business will work. I'm dealing with things at a personal level. That's the lowest level. When you now start growing, God will add authority to you. You will start praying for territorial issues. Because there are men who don't pray for personal things. They have the, the energy level where they operate in God. Everything they need happens because of that energy they are emitting. Then they now begin to affect territories. Hope you know that as we are seated in this hall, we are not all the same. You will make the mistake. Even in the natural, we are not all the same. Some of us are men. Some of us are women. And among those of us who are women, some of us are young. Some of us are old. Some of us are fair. Some of us are dark. Some of us are tall. Some of us are short. So even in the natural, we are not the same. If we have this, this multitude, multifaceted dimension of disparity in the natural, does it not suggest to you that the spirit will be more? We are not the same. There are some men who are changing things at their personal level. But there are other men that the fate of a territory depends on them. So if God wants to help people, he will send those men. They have grown in prayer 
Those ones are no longer ordinary believers. They have become kingdom agents. That's where prayer is taking you to. At this level now, you become an asset to God. You become his battle axe. So God uses you to create changes territorially. So even in the corridor of heaven, we are not the same. We may think we are all citizens. We are not the same. Do you notice that even in Nigeria, we are not the same? There's somebody in Nigeria today that will say, tomorrow there's no work. The whole Nigeria will shut down. Because of where he's operating on the political structure. That is how prayer also brings us to different structures in the spirit. We are not the same. There are men who will speak and shape the future of Port Harcourt. They have grown from praying for personal things. Now they pray for territorial things. In Daniel chapter 10, from verse 12, Israel was in captivity for 70 years. God was waiting for an intercessor. 70 years. It was captured in the prophecy of Jeremiah that the captivity will be loosed in 70 years. 70 years passed, nothing happened. Until the Bible said concerning Daniel, that Daniel went to the place of prayer. So if Daniel did not pray, they would have remained in captivity. See, the problem we have is we don't know how to change things. The government is not doing well. Everybody is complaining on Facebook. Everybody is complaining on Twitter. The best thing Twitter can do for you is to trend. It will change nothing. Because most of these people are manipulated by territorial spirits. You need men who can ascend to that level in the spirit to speak and condition the activity in the atmosphere. And we don't have such men in our generation in their numbers anymore. That is why we, we make pertinent issues a social issue. People are being kidnapped. All we are doing is write pictures, write messages on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and it goes nowhere. Whereas what we should do is to hold hands together and create change in prayer. But we are such men. We have not even raised men who are able to pray for their needs. This is a generation where somebody wants to travel. He's looking for his prophet to tell him whether to travel or not. His own personal life. He wants to travel. He will wait for Papa. For Papa to tell him, you can go. And we think his spirituality. This is a generation where somebody wants to start business. He cannot pray and hear God for himself. This is a generation where somebody wants to marry. As important as marriage is, he cannot pray and hear God. He will depend on a prophet, on an apostle, on a pastor to tell him who to marry. To tell him what business to do. Because he doesn't have hours on the altar. There's no stamina to wait until God speaks. That's the generation we are in. How can we raise men who can change territories? But in the days of Daniel, only Daniel could kneel down and pray. And the Bible said, from the first day you knelt down, answer was released from heaven. Look at the level of strength that is required to pray for a territory. The answer didn't come for 21 days. Daniel didn't go. How many of us here can pray for 21 days? Non-stop. That's why we can't change things in the territory. 21 days. Answer did not come. The guy remained there. It takes stamina in the place of prayer to affect the territory. And until two archangels were mobilized because one man was praying. There are certain men that are stronger than a whole congregation. Two archangels. Gabriel was released. The prince of Persia intercepted him. Michael was released. And when Gabriel came, he told him that I come to give you skill and understanding. This is what will happen. The reason you people are in captivity is because the prince of Persia has kept you in captivity. He had nothing to do with the king of Babylon. He said, however, when he goes, the prince of Grecia will come. He said, but in order to intercept it, I'm going back to meet Daniel in the heavenly place so that we continue fighting because the guy prayed. Do you think somebody who prays and affects territories, God will allow him to die? That means he is the answer to the prayer point of thousands of people because he's present. Certain things cannot happen in that territory. That's the second level of legislation in the spirit. Listen, don't leave this world as an ordinary person. See, even if it's not just your personal things, at least pray enough to change your family. You should be able to stop death in your family. You should be able to stop poverty in your family. You should be able to stop sickness in your family from your altar. Even if you cannot affect Port Harcourt, 
at least deal with your family matter. Let it be that since God started using this man, nobody has died here. Since God started using this man, people are now getting married on time. Since God started using this man, madness has stopped. Since God started using this man, nobody has cancer anymore. That is the direction we should be growing. And then a point comes, you begin to pray for Okrika. And you will say, there will be no more banditry in Okrika. There will be no more kidnapping in Okrika. There will be no more abortion in Okrika. There will be no more immorality in Okrika. And your prayer enterprise can create a radar over the territory. Did you read about Samuel? The Bible says Samuel was in Nayot in Ramah. Samuel prayed until Samuel created a radar over Ramah. When Saul came to arrest David, David ran to Samuel. Samuel sent a battalion of soldiers. The moment they enter Ramah, they fell down and they started prophesying. Nobody spoke to them. The atmosphere was locked by a man of prayer. So I thought those soldiers were not well trained. He sent another battalion. When they entered Rama, they started prophesying. Saul now said, okay, since you are no longer training soldiers well, I will go myself. And when Saul showed up, in his own case, the Bible says he tore his clothes, a king, and prophesied naked. He had not even seen somewhere. Prayer has created a vote over that territory. How come we are 100,000, but we can't create change in our territory? Because we are plenty, but we are not praying. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. he said, I will hear them and I will heal their land. If one man can pray and it didn't happen once, Daniel did it in Babylon. David, Samuel did it in Nayot in Ramah and even in the New Testament, Ananias did it in Damascus. Ananias prayed over Damascus. Paul collected letters from Jerusalem. He was on his way to Damascus to arrest people in the church and to kill them the moment he entered the atmosphere of damascus jesus struck him from heaven saw saw acts 9 4 and 5 why are you persecuting me he said who are you lord he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest now rise up i'm not the one dealing with you there's somebody in that city that has secured the land stand up go and meet the man that is controlling the borders of damascus i'm not the one don't count me in. I have had, I've left the realm. The authority over the realm is with the apostles. It's with men. There are men there. So the same way you lock your house and put the key in the pocket and you are sure that your house is secured, there are certain men who lock territories and put the key in their pocket. Elijah showed up and stood before the king and said, before God whom I stand, there shall be no rain or dew except not by God, but by my word. What did he know? Before God whom I stand, and you have been a Christian for 15 years. Even your family, you can't secure it. People are dying. Businesses are failing. Women are not getting married. Sickness is killing everybody. And you say you are an apostle. You say you are a prophet. You say you are a Christian. Your altar must wake up. Your altar must wake up. Like somewhere, shut down Rama in the spirit. Like Daniel, shut down Babylon. Like, 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 like what's his name? Ananias, shut down Damascus. Let it be that because a Mecca is in Okrika, we didn't hear of banditry anymore. Because a Mecca is in Okrika, we didn't hear of abortion anymore. Because grace is in Okrika, we didn't hear of death anymore. Let it be that your altar has written a law over the land. Those are the men God is looking for. When they say, you are my battle axe, you are my weapon of war, he's looking for men who can write laws over families, who can write laws over territories. That is when we become blessings to nations. So that when we show up, the people will know that their answer have come. And finally, prayer in legislation makes you to participate with God in rulership. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible said the prayers of the saints are sent to heaven as others and they are stored in golden vials. So when God wants to do something on earth, he takes from the prayer and the petition of those who are participating with him. At that level, you have become a judge among men. So you can decide the destiny of nations and territories because every time you prophesy over that nation, every time you pray over that nation, your utterances are like incense. God stores them. They become like policy statements in the spirit that God vetoes as a king 
in order to change things among men these are the things that prayer do for us and this is why prayer is a force this is why prayer is a government by prayer you can change your life by prayer you can change your family by prayer you can change the fate of a territory and by prayer even a nation can be changed the bible said moses came to Horeb, the backside of the desert there he saw a bush burning that was not consumed and they began to engage the god that he sought for 40 years and god said go to pharaoh tell him let my people go that they may serve me so god can use one man to take a nation if god can use one man to take a nation what will god now do if he has one thousand what will god now do if he has ten thousand meanwhile in our generation we are in millions but we are not praying so although our number is increasing heaven is not making profit because he cannot find men who will stand in the gap he cannot find women who will stand in the gap we are busy with earthly things and we don't know that our true advantage is in the spirit you know what the bible said it said out of the mouth of babes and sucklings it said thou has ordained strength that means even if we refuse to pray if children start praying god can use their prayer to change our nation this is why everybody must be taught to pray children mature and elderly because in the mouth of anybody who prays power can be released a generation must wake up to prayer the revival we cry for has one key and the key is prayer because when people pray it shows hunger when people pray it shows humility and brokenness and when people pray they entreat the heavens i don't know what you have heard tonight but what i came to tell you is that the destiny of this land depends on you and what i came to tell you is that the outcome of your destiny does not depend on god when jesus died and resurrected god finished his part the outcome of your destiny depends on you what you do with the death burial and resurrection of jesus is what will determine the outcome of your life and the way to maximize what jesus did god did for us in christ is by engaging the altar like i began teaching from the beginning for some of you it will give you authority to legislate and to litigate for some of you it will give you access to the proceeding world for some of you it will energize you to walk the path of your destiny and for some of you it will transform you and transfigure you until you begin to manifest the glory of God are we ready to pray tonight are we ready to pray for just five minutes tonight I don't know what you have heard but tonight is my first night so I needed to explain a few things so that you understand the power of prayer listen it doesn't take anything to heal the sick I will pray for the sick now and in less than five minutes many people will be healed but you know the danger if an evil spirit is gone out of a man he returns when I'm gone after the conference you may be healed when that spirit returns and he finds you empty the Bible said it will not enter you it will go and get seven more wicked spirits and come back he said your situation will be worse than what you had before you were prayed for this is why people receive healing and they lose it because when they are healed they don't know what to do with God this is why people receive breakthroughs and they lose it because when they receive it they don't know what to do so I don't just want to come here as an anointed man make declarations and the power of God hit people and people are healed but people don't know what to do with it this is why I took time to teach you now that I have taught you I want us to stand up and pray for just five minutes whatever it is that is in your heart pray it now and let there be a change so that you will know that you too prayed and created the change wherever you are standing now this is your hour
want to pray now but hear this let me give direction to your prayer i'll lead you to pray three prayers now number one ask god everything hindering the manifestation of my glory let it give way tonight everything stopping me from shining let it give way tonight because when we pray we are transfigured father let every glory you have put on my life be released tonight go ahead and pray in the holy ghost Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ate te 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 na kapana takana tabatai. Ete ne te ke sai na kapana tafina. 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 Ete ne te ke sai na
We don't do what we do just because we are anointed. We do what we do because we obey the secrets that He has taught us. There are many Christians who are not maximizing their destinies because they trivialize the commandments of God. I want us to pray again. Every demonic stronghold, every negative power shutting down my possibility. Now, by prayer, I take authority and I cancel your oppression. Go ahead and pray that prayer for one minute. Pray that prayer for one minute. of our time I will stop here but now let me show you something just play the keyboard for me now lift your hands toward heaven and stop praying if you can when you pray you are in charge nothing can shake you you become like Mount Zion that cannot be moved the reason we struggle is because we don't pray when you pray, your words are lost in the spirit. And there are two things that will happen now. I will ask the Holy Ghost to anoint some of you with a fresh baptism. The hand of God will come upon people now and set them on fire for the next phase of their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, if, do we have ushers here? The people God will touch now, I want to touch them. Wherever they are standing, in the auditorium and in the overflow, from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to overflow one, to overflow two. Everyone you have a portion for an encounter, I ask for a fresh impartation, a fresh baptism of fire. Wherever they are standing, now Holy Ghost, such as I carry, in the name of Jesus, take that fire now. Usher, help them and bring them here. Let me lay hands on them quickly. From the left to the right, from the front to the back. When you pray, if you speak, things happen. We have not believed cunningly devised fables. When we spoke to you about the coming king, he said we were eyewitnesses of this.
name of Jesus, step into that realm now. By prayer, I will stay in prayer. When I leave this world, I will go in prayer. I came by prayer, I will stay in prayer. When I leave this world, I will live in prayer. I'm seeing men that their potentials are locked by demonic altars. I come against those altars now. Everyone held down by demonic powers. Business is shut down. Health shut down. Marriage is shut down. In the name of Jesus, I stand against those altars and I declare now. Let those when altars catch fire and let the spells over your life break now. I Come out from that bondage. I came by prayer. I say prayer. When I will leave this world, I will leave my prayer. I came by prayer. I will say prayer. When I leave this world, I will leave my prayer. I came by prayer. Lift your hands toward heaven. There are three things God is doing now. Number one, He's announcing someone. And I'm not just talking about preachers, some of you are businessmen. There is light about to come upon your business. Because the forces that has dwarfed you are being pulled out. Father, wherever they are standing, everyone you are showing mercy, I'm bringing announcement to. In the name of Jesus, let the anointing that breaks the yoke come upon that one now. Father, one, two, three, whoever that one is, carry that unction now. Take that fire. We chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah, we chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah, 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 we chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah, we chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah, we chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah, Lord if you can't lift your hands I'm seeing something brutal descending here now and what God is doing now is awakening people's callings and ordinations some of you many years ago you saw visions they came to pass some of you many years ago you had unction for healing you had unction to prophesy but you have lost them the Lord is telling me now that mantles of ordination will descend here and it will be brutal ushers you help me now wherever you are standing every spiritual thing you have lost every calling every ordination he said the gifts and callings of god they are without repentance he has not taken them but if you have lost them father wherever they are standing now i see seven of them that a fire is coming upon one two three four five 
six, seven. Carry that fire. Yes. to be a mother must have is the capacity for intercession the way a mother hand covers her cheeks that's how mothers cover their children in the place of prayer see if you don't pray your children will be harlots your children will be bandits you will see prophets become useless i would have been a drunkard my mother ransomed me on the altar that's why i'm here preaching today and there's a grace for intercession for mothers that are hearing me now some of you had capacity to pray but at the crisis of life kill that grace god is calling you back to the altar father i pray for every woman here especially those who are mothers those who have callings of priesthood those who have callings of intercession wherever they are i speak to your womb in the spirit he said as soon as zion traveled she brought forth her children the capacity the stamina for intercession prophetic dimension of intercession carry that fire now carry that fire now carry help them help them help them carry Ayo, that fire now Ayo, 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 Ayo. be done by them. Many signs shall follow them that believe. The Lord is telling me now, I'm, I'm, I'm perceiving something by my right hand. There's somebody's voice that is being amplified to the nations. To the nations. To the nations. Suddenly the nations will come seeking you. Father, whoever that one is, right now, let the hand of God find him. Let the hand of God find him. Wherever you are standing, carry that fire now. Nations. Help that man there so he doesn't injure himself. There's something heavy upon him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now hear me. 
whatever affliction you came here with if it's a, a growth in your body just put your hand there if it's an ear condition put your hand there if it's an eye condition put your hand and if it's related to your blood and your organ you can't put your hand just place your hand on your head you don't need to struggle with these things your struggle is on the altar if you prevail in prayer you will prevail in life I'm done. Help me count this fan. This is one, two, three. The fourth one there. There's somebody under that fan there. The Lord is telling me you are having a, a challenge with your heart. Like, like a palpitation. Heart, your heart is as if your heart is shaking. When you are breathing, it's palpitating and shaking. Towards the back there. The Holy Ghost is telling me he's touching somebody. There's a condition around the chest affecting your heart. At the back, under that, around that fourth, fifth fan there. Is there anybody there like that? Is there, at the back, at the back, around the last two fans there. I'm seeing the Holy Ghost touch somebody on the chest. And something that pertains to your heart is being corrected. Is there anybody there like that? I want to see that hand. If there's anybody at the back there who has that chest condition. That's what God is telling me now. Can you hear me? In the name of Jesus. If you are at the back there, lift your hand. Are you the one, brother? You are the one. You have a, a heart, something like a heart condition. It's moving and shaking. Put your hands there. See, when you pray, you become the answer to people's prayers. What people are trusting God for, God sends you to bring answer. Her heart will be corrected now, not tomorrow. Now, in the name of Jesus, put your hand there. I cause that heart affliction. I cause that movement in your heart. I command that heart be healed now in the name of Jesus. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Sister, look at me. Breathe in and breathe out. Remove your hand now. Breathe in and breathe out. Three times. For the last time, breathe in and breathe out. Come up here. That affliction has left you. Run like this three times and see if you notice anything. I'm seeing somebody on this road. You are having a blood condition. It's like the blood is dripping and it's not stopping. It's been flowing for some weeks now and you are troubled. As I'm talking to you now, that flow will stop now. Now. It will stop now. And it's towards that, those two windows there, by the back, around that back there. There's something that has to do with your flow. Is there anybody there like that? Sister, are you the one? You are the one? Please come. It has stopped now. Permanent. In the name of Jesus. How do you feel? Check, check. Don't try to help me. Check. Shake your body. Check. Find that movement. Find that pain. Elohim Adonai. Road. 
towards the back there. You couldn't lift your hand. It's like there was a dislocation on your shoulder. I'm hearing that now in the spirit towards the back, close to the last fan there. Who is that person? Lift your right hand. Let me see if you are the one. You can't lift that hand like a broken bone of some sort. Lift it up. If you discover you have been healed, wave it. Wave it. That pain is gone. Run to me on the altar here. If that dislocation has just been healed, check it. It's gone. If that blood stops, will you know? Stop in the name of Jesus. Be healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mama, how do you feel? I'm all right for now. Not for now. <laughs> Has it gone? Yes, it is gone. Are you sure it's perfect? I'm seeing different. You are feeling different. Before I cannot speak like this. Before she couldn't even speak like this. How do you feel now? I can speak. Somebody give the Lord a big shout. Sister, you had the same challenge. I caused that flow. Stop in the name of Jesus. Can you go and verify if it has stopped? Let them go and verify quickly. That person that had a broken shoulder. Who is that person? Has that, has that, has that, that shoulder been healed? Where is the person? Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai. What happened? Yeah, I had a pain here, but it's gone now. You couldn't lift that hand before. Can you lift it now? Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. It is permanent in the name of Jesus. Hey. I'm you seeing somebody close to this camera by the left here. You are having a kidney condition. It's like the doctor told you there's a challenge with your kidney. Somewhere here. Close to this eye. Somewhere here. It's like a kidney dysfunction. It's like you've even done a test before and they told you there's a challenge. Is there somebody here like that? Not too far. Around the middle here. On this eye. By this side. Is there anybody there? Where that mama with blue is standing? Somewhere around there. You are the one brother? Are you the one? Was it diagnosed by a doctor? Come. I'm showing you this. Listen. This is what you should do at home and in the market. It's not for church. This is the authority of the believer. This is why we pray. God energizes us. This one is not energy I can run. It's to change things in life. You had a kidney challenge? What did the doctor say? The doctor said that... Let me do. I didn't get that. Speak boldly. Speak loud. The doctor said I cannot do it. You had a kidney challenge. The doctor verified it. What did they call it? Kidney challenge. What's he saying? Help me. What was the issue? You had a pain. I've not prayed for the sick. Hear what daddy is saying. Come up. What was your challenge? My challenge was that I have a pain all over my scrotum before this time. Better. A pain on your, on your scrotum? Yes. But right, now? right now, I don't receive the pains again. Nobody has prayed for the sick. I'm just calling cases by word of knowledge. Healed in the name of Jesus. Daddy, it is permanent in the name of Jesus. Now, if you need a healing, place your hands there now. I want you to focus on Jesus now. And please hear me. Healing is not only for your body. Some of you is your relationships. There are strategic relationships that will change your life that the devil has attacked. Some of you is in your circumstances. Business is failing. Family is failing. All of that will receive a touch tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I'm seeing a young lady outside. You have a growth on your left breast. And you have been feeling this funny pain. As I'm talking now, that growth has dematerialized completely. If you, if you will check your breast now, you will discover that that growth is gone and is gone forever. As I'm talking now, I'm sensing by my right, somebody has a hynea pain, hynea. In fact, you were waiting for surgery, but that growth has also gone. It has dematerialized now. If you check, you discover that pain is gone and the growth is gone. Check, check. You felt that pain. Who is the person? You are the one? You had hynea? You had hynea? Doctor verified? Yes, sir. What happened? I can't feel, I was feeling the pain. So you had a hynea pain? Yes, sir. Did the doctor verify it? Yes, sir. What did the doctor say? Um, they said maybe they will give me medicine to subside it for the time. Then, uh, then after some time, if I have money, they will do operation on it. They told you they will schedule you for operation when you have money? Yes, sir. What happened now? I can't feel the pain anymore. Like Check. Doctor, come. Come. Be sure. Hit that place as hard as you can. Hit it hard. Let's be sure. You can't feel. Hainia just left him now. That's what I'm talking about. What happened, sister? Has the blood stopped? It's not as before again. It has reduced. No, we didn't say it should reduce. It will stop now completely. In the name of Jesus, I command the flow of blood. Stop now. Stop now. Stop now. Has somebody checked to see that there's no tumor or pain in the breast? Mama, you are the one? You had a tumor? Let's listen to Mama. I'm doing this to help your faith. I don't need to but to help somebody's faith that God can heal you now what was the problem mama breast pain you had breast pain yeah, breast pain for the breast mouth for how long since last year since last year what happened now well I never look you can't feel the pain again I never look uh, I can't hear you you I, can't feel the pain again I need healing now are you still feeling the pain uh, small, 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 small. <laughs> Pains go in the name of Jesus. Check it again, Mama. Don't be afraid. Check. No, no, no. Check. It's... Help Mama to the back. Let her check. Now lift your hands toward heaven, Father. In the name of Jesus, I need to hear your amen as loud as possible. It's a sign of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every sickness. Lord, you have taught them the power of prayer. Now let them see the result so that they will demonstrate the same. I command every chain of infirmity to break now in the name of Jesus. I command every devil of infirmity Leave them now in the name of Jesus. Eyes be healed. Amen. Ears be healed. Every organ in the body be healed. Blood be healed. Bones and joints be healed. I command growth, cancer, pile, dematerialize now. In the name of Jesus, I command broken relationships be healed. I command circumstantial crisis be healed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and honor Him. This is how simple it is. The hard work is in prayer. The results is the simple part. If you pray, God will honor your word. You run, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are 
If you have noticed a change in your body, we can't take all the testimonies, but you are now the proof that the word of God is not a lie. Wherever you are standing, a pain has gone. Eye can see, ear can hear, a growth has left you. You couldn't walk, now you can walk. Wave your right hand and give glory to God. Wave your right hand. No, not everybody. If you have noticed a healing, wave your right hand. Look at that. Somebody give the Lord a shout. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Wait, wait, wait. Mama, ask Mama, has the pain gone? Apostle, she has checked and confirmed that the pain is totally gone. Mama, is the pain gone completely? You can't feel it anymore? Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Apostle, what? Our mother here was diagnosed of hymia pain. You were she diagnosed of hymia pain. Hymia, and then when she came to this meeting, the pain was still there. The pain was there when you came. But after hymia pain, what happened now? After the declaration, the pain totally disappeared. The pain has left. Somebody give the Lord a shout. You are mighty on your throne. Wait a minute. Time, time, time. Now hear this. Some of you think what we are doing is a joke. If you pray. That's how God will use you to shame the devil. See, all this problem you are running around with and saying, I don't know what to do. It's a, it's a lie. When you master prayer, you will discover every change will be at the mercy of your words. Look at the number of people that have been healed. If you have been healed, let me see your right hand. This is only in this hall. Those outside have also been healed. Your Lordship, do I have your permission to bring them here? I'm not taking the testimony so that they just see the people the Lord has taught. Now, those of you who have been healed, come up here and meet me here quickly. So that somebody we know that prayer works. It's not religion. Wherever you are standing, everybody that waved hand, come here now. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hey, you are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. See the people that the Lord has touched only in the auditorium. I was not feeling any anointing. I just engaged what I taught you. And you can do the same. Tomorrow morning, I will teach you how to release power after you have generated it on the altar. Because there's a way to release power. So that everybody, they are still coming, everybody will manifest God. Have you been blessed tonight? If you have been blessed, give the Lord a shout of praise. Now there is one thing you will do for me. As you leave this conference, you are going to talk to the Lord and tell him, I will never live a prayerless life again. Even if it's 30 minutes in a day, I will give to you in prayer. If you are in agreement with me, lift your hands. Let me pray for you now. This is a call for prayer. Don't allow your life be at the mercy of demons. They will mess you up. Demons are wicked. Father, everyone making a commitment to prayer now. I decree the grace to pray. Let it rest upon them now. You will no longer struggle with prayer in the name of Jesus. And finally, drop your hands. 
If you are here and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, maybe you have gone to church, but you don't have a personal relationship with God, lift your hands toward heaven. Let me pray for you. Just your right hand. Lift that hand. You want a relationship with God? Lift that hand. Let me pray with you now. That's right. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with my heart that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for my sins. On the third day, he rose from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, for accepting me in Jesus' precious name. For everyone that made that commitment, the Lord keep you, the Lord preserve you, and the Lord cause you to walk in his presence forever. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Can you put your hands together? Praise the Lord. We thank God for the life of God's servant whom he have used mightily among us tonight. We just want to inform us that tomorrow morning he will be ministering from 10 a.m. Tomorrow morning he will be ministering from 10 a.m. Thank you very much. Please the following names should see the medical team as I Ashan or Rema Okelembu go out in our moon in Okoru Abe Buma Fibanesima Demsi W Paka Salomi Mama Kalio Tamno Celebia Josiah Tonye Lase Tima Miabaka Aseme Anna I Charity Ogan Gladys Victor Susan Christian I want God Emma Obiabu Gwawarinyon